Hello, it's me, and we're going to look at this higher order version of this guy. We've talked about different types of octahedrons, and we're sort of journeying through that. Um, kind of neat little um, series of puzzles here that we've that we've seen. This was the three by three octahedron. This is the four by four, or I guess what you'd call the master version. Four by four being master, five by five being professor, six by six, I guess from there, between six by six, seven by seven, I've heard them called um, supreme, elite. Um, in any case, this is the four by four version. So you can see that in addition to these three layers, we've got an extra one which bisects right down the center. So we have one layer here, another layer here, and another layer here. Now, lest you think that, okay, so it's a four by four mod, so what? What do you add to the table with this? This is pretty unique among four by four mods. And here's the reason that I say that. I don't think there's any question in our mind that this is a solved state. Now, usually when you have a cube and you, or a puzzle and you turn it, you can tell that it's not solved. So I'm gonna turn this, and I'm gonna turn this a couple times. There. Taking a look at it, it still looks solved. Because what's interesting about this is that despite moving it through the center and destroying the middles, there's no way to know if it's solved or not. Because each one of these faces here, although this is actually the true face that we deal with, you know, the first layer and the second layer, the colored faces really are quite independent. So it appears that there's a variety of different solved states um, that you can move through and you'd have no way of knowing unless there's a specific color configuration. Now, my thinking is that there really isn't. I can try to correlate it with this and say, well, red opposite um, yellow, like this, red opposite yellow. Then we can say green opposite dark green, but there is no dark green. So you can't even say that there's any specific configuration. So that's what's interesting. The only other time I've seen that is with the um, roadblock, as you recall, that it was kind of a subtle, a subtle change with that. So basically, um, that's an aspect of this puzzle that's, that's unique. Now here's another aspect that's unique. In most other puzzles, when you have centers, what all the centers have in common is the same color. Maybe there's two colors to some of the center pieces, sometimes three, like in the axis cube, but you can always tell because they're the same color. In this case, that's, that's not so. The only thing that correlates all the centers with each other is the fact that none of the colors are the same. If you have any centers where you have two that are the same, then it's not correct. So they're all different colors, which makes it challenging to get your centers in and challenging to edge pair as well. So we're gonna kind of go through this. Now, my promise with these puzzles is no new algorithms. We're gonna solve this exactly like a four x four. We're just gonna do it in a way to where there isn't any trouble with our, with our perspective. And the only way to start the process of scrambling is to turn it through the corners here. So turn it here, turn it here. Now you can see that it's getting scrambled. But I also want to start separating the centers out. So I'm going to start doing this as well. So a combination of face turning or and center turning here will start to give us more of a solved state. So you can see there's three colors uh, here that are the same, so we're losing our ability to delineate specific uh, centers. I'm just gonna go ahead and continue the scramble here. Well, it looks like we're scrambled pretty well. It doesn't take much to scramble this completely out of recognition because there's so many different states. Okay, so how do we go about solving this? How can we do this simply? First off, don't panic. We'll be able to get through it. The first thing that I would do is define my first center. My first center is going to be defined as the one center where none of the colors are the same. Obviously, that's not this one. That's not this one. How about this? Yeah. It's the only one, actually. So this is going to be my first center. And this is going to define the rest of what's going to happen with, with a puzzle. So we've got the gray, purple, yellow, and red. Once I do that, this puzzle is now locked in. It's locked in where this center is going to define each center in turn as, as we go through it. So this will lock it in like this. So now that we have this center quite easily solved, let's move on to this one. Now, once I've defined this as my center, I've actually now defined this side as being yellow, this is being red, this is being gray, and this is being purple. So with this center, I need to find a red one and 
um, a yellow one. So that should be fairly easy. I'll just move this in here. There's my yellow. <clears throat> now I gotta put a red one over here. So where this blue is, I know a red one needs to go. Here's a red one here. Move it here, down, turn up, and bang, okay. Now what about these here? Well, what I need to do is these can be any color as long as they're not the same as these or the same as anyone's over here. I've got a blue, well blue is fine, but I got another blue. So what else can I put in? Well, anything as long as it's not here. It could be green, it could be um, white. <clears throat> Why don't we go ahead and do green? So we'll go ahead and put a green one in here. Now my technique for doing that, if I wanted to move that in, and again, I'm not redefining any rules here. All I'm doing is I'm just doing standard four by four solves, standard center solves. So what I'm gonna do if I wanna move this into here, whether it's from here to here or here to here, is I'm gonna hold it here and go like, um, if this is R and this is L, depending on how, how I'm moving it, we're gonna go Ri, um, Fi, L, F, R, Fi, Li. And then move that back down here, and that'll put that over here. So that's a way of uh, getting that in there. Now, I gave you an algorithm because before what I was doing is I was showing you how I just placed it. And normally I don't use an algorithm for that, I just visualize what I'm doing. But anyway, now we've got our second center. Easy as pie. So now we do this center over here. So we've already defined much of what needs to come in here. So for instance, this was my baseline center over here. This needs to be red and silver. So let's find a red, which is here. And I might as well just move that in. So this red is gonna come down here. Turn, 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 that's good. Now I need to get a silver one in here. Here's a silver one here. This is gonna to go to where this is. So I'm gonna move this here. And I'll just go ahead and give the algorithm for the left side. And that's gonna be L, F, R, I, F, I, L, I, F, R, I. Oops, and then something like that. So this is in and this is in. So I've already defined this as a center here, so now this is gonna to have to be blue. Now that I said the algorithm, I'm not gonna say it again, I'm just gonna kinda of go through the intuitive way that I do it anyway. This is gonna move into here within this plane, so this moves here. I've now defined this bar, one by two bar. I move it out of that plane and then bring it down, then I start putting things back, moving this back up, here, here, and here. Okay, so this is in. So what color can this be? Well, it can be any color I have not used yet. Can't be green, because I have green over here. Uh, how about orange? It could be orange, right? Because I've not used orange. So, orange it is. And this will come down here, using the same strategies, same algorithms. And there we go. Okay, so now we have the third center. Done, done, and done. So now I'm gonna go to this side, and I know that purple has to be here, and orange has to be here. And that's what I'm gonna do. Yellow, rather. So yellow is coming into here. Turn and turn. Okay, now purple has to come into here. Here's a nice purple one. Actually, I've got two to choose from. And this purple has to come here, so this will come here. So once again, move it down to put it here within, within this plane. So I've created this side. Move it out of the way of that plane so I can move it down from the other plane. And then turn this back to bring back up what I originally put down, bring this back up to here. All right, so this is in, this is in. In terms of what needs to go here, I know that green needs to go here and white needs to go here. So here's a white that I can move down here. Move it in, in this plane, take it out, move it out from the other plane, bring it back, move this plane back in, bring this back here, put in what I just created, 
and then position it. Or you can do the algorithm. Anyway, white is here. Now the green one gets moved here down to here. Again, it's all just 4x4 four four center placing. Put it in in this plane. So I've now created this bar, move it out of the way, and move it down from the opposite plane. Now I've got to move it back, bring this back up, move this here, and bring this back up. Okay, so now we've created this center. So we've got this center, this, 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 and this. So we've actually gone very quickly to our last two centers. So this one and this one. So these two are our last two centers. So my recommendation now is just get one of your other centers. So this is here. This is going to be gray. This is going to be orange. I've got an orange over here and a gray over here that I can use. So I'm just going to move this down here. Turn, 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 turn. Okay, there's my orange. I've got to move a gray one into here. I'm going to move it in from this one. So this is going to move down here now. So this comes down here, creates this bar over here from this plane, move it out of the way of that plane, move it down. Then I just have to reconstruct this back, bring this plane back up, put this back in here, and then put in the bar that I just created here. Uh, you'll get the hang of it. So now this is, this is solved. So now I have to deal with this center. Well, the first thing that I want to do is um, I want to have a little bit of an understanding of exactly what it takes. All the components are here, but obviously they're not set up right. This is right. This is right. Um, so just sw switch these two, right? Well, I'm not so sure. Because bear in mind, once I put these centers in here, I've now locked it in. I've now locked this whole segment here. But these corners might not agree with me. Um, these corners might not be in the correct configuration. Because if I lock this in, these corners can only move within this plane. They can't move out of it. And if it doesn't like where it is, and you can't move it out and put it in somewhere, then you're stuck. You have that type of 4x4 four four super cube parity of your corners. So instead, what you want to do is you want to lock in the corners and not the centers. Put the corners in where they're supposed to be and lock it in that way. Because with the centers, you can take it out of this plane and, and you can do some exchanging from below without moving the corners. So this is not as restricted as this, and that's why you get that parity. If you lock it in with a the center, these, you can't have as much variation in movement. They're stuck in this plane. If you lock it in from the corners, then even if you can't get this correct, you can start swapping and you can bring it, uh, you can do a three cycle basically with another center and rotate it around, which you can't do with this. So what I'm going to do first is knowing that I put all these centers in within this plane is I'm going to actually start solving the corners in order to make sure that everything is right. So I'm going to move it up here. And as you can see, these, I know what colors these are going to be. So I've got the red one in here. I've got the silver one in here. I've already got the yellow one in here. Now I just want to put the purple one in here. So I'm just going to move this until I find it. Turn, turn, turn. And might as well put that back. Okay, so these are all fine. Now I'm going to turn this back upside down and put these corners in where they're supposed to be and not even worry about the center right now. So this comes over here. This is in... Um, and I'm defining it based on this. So this green is in. This white is in. This is not in, and this is not in. These have to be swapped. This is the wrong configuration. You're not supposed to get this. This is going to give you parity of those corners. I have to make it to where either they're all in or just one is in. So I can move it over here. This is in. No, no, no. Okay. So with that said, I'm going to hold it here and just rotate, do the algorithm that rotates these corners around. And that's going to be um, with the corner that I have in to the right side. It's going to be U, R, U I L I U R I U I L. All right, so now this is in, this is in, this is in, this green one, and this is in, which means it's locked in. This is how we want it. We do not want this to change direction in any way unless there's an algorithm that gets it right back. And it's going to be the same algorithm that we just did because these are corners here. And now as we're putting these centers in, these centers have the characteristics of corners. They're exactly the same thing. There's four corners. There's no 
real center, so to speak, and I'm going to use the same algorithm to cycle these around. So let's see what we've already got. This white is already in place. Now I wouldn't hold it like this, saying that this is down, up, across. Hold it like this so that you've got two down and two up. Because this three cycle is basically, if, if we have this one down, it's going to put this to here, this to here, this to here. Now, I've done many, many Supercube 4x4 tutorials where I've gone through this. But I'm going to go through it again just because it's, um, it's illustrative if you just have this puzzle. But I've gone through this with rhombic dodecahedrons, the 4x4 version of that, the, um, uh, the megamorphings. Um, but we'll do it again because this has its own special characteristics that might make it a little easier. So this is good down here. I want to move a green one down to here. So this needs to come to here. So what I'm going to do to serve that end is I'm going to move this up here and then eventually move it down to here. So let's just plop this up here. This is going to move down here, but that's going to be fairly easy to bring out. Now the algorithm is a corner switching algorithm, which will do the three cycle. So we're going to start off with uh, um, moving this up here, R, then UI, LI, U, RI, UI, L, and then finish it up with a U. Alright, so what that did is it did not touch any of these guys. So it did not touch any of, um, any of the corners in questions. These corners are still fine, if you notice. This is still here. But we did move the green one up here, and I now want to move it here. So I'm going to cycle this over here, which will take this green and put it here. Um, this will come here, this will come here. So let's go ahead and do that same algorithm again. So far I'm just doing super cube 4x4 algorithms, no change. So now I have that here, I put that in, this is now correct, and we're still locked in. Notice we haven't changed that. Now in this case, I got real lucky, because this is now in and this is now in. Now it oftentimes doesn't happen that way. It oftentimes happens where this has to be turned. Um, and it's probably beneficial to show that. Here's something that you might more typically see um, in this case, where you have these in, but these need to be flip-flopped. So what you see is, um, you know, this, this is all right, but this blue needs to come here, and this orange needs to come here. Now here's the good thing about this particular puzzle. We have ones that we can swap with. So all I need to do is I need to swap these two somehow. And you know that there's a way of doing it where I had to hold it like this, but we don't have to do that with this particular puzzle because I can use this one as kind of a basis of comparison. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start three cycling these three pieces, which between them just have two colors. So I'm going to turn this up here. So what's going to happen is that this is going to come down here which in which case there's no change. This is, will come here, which is what I want to do. I want to bring a yellow one here, and this will come up here, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and do it. Bang, bang, zoom, pow, splat, plop, boom. Okay, so, so that's fine. Basically what we want to do is, is we move the orange over here, which is good. And now what we want to do is we want to move, we want to basically do it again, because now what's going to happen is that this orange is going to come up here, which is where it needs to be. This blue is going to come down here, which is where it needs to be, and this orange is going to come here. So effectively what would have happened is that we've moved the blue here and we've moved the orange over here. And this orange will be in place to be over here. So that's the advantage of this, is it, is it made it easier. We moved the blue up to here, we took this orange here, move this orange here, we wanted an orange here anyway, so it's not like we're flipping the two, we're just replacing one orange uh, from here to here. So let's do it again. Bang, zoom, and turn here. Okay, so now as you can see, we've done our flipping. So in this particular case, um, it's, it's a little easier. If anyone has this puzzle and needs a little bit more guidance on that, uh, let me know. So what should have happened is we've locked in our edges, our, our corners, so that's all fine.